This is the primary tuberculosis. This is the situation where the patient or person has never been exposed to the, this pathogen before and now this is the first exposure. Now in the first exposure what happens is the pathogen is of course I'm now going to take one piece of this let's say this one and let's see what happens. In this alveolus is sitting a macrophage as well. So what is this macrophage? This is alveolar macrophage. So let's go here. This is the alveolar macrophage. This is the nucleus of the macrophage. Macrophage connects with the pathogen in multiple ways. Most important is the <coughs> most important is the mannose binding. So there is mannose present on the pathogen surface and there is manan or manan receptors on the macrophage. That is one mechanism by which macrophage arrests the mycobacterium tuberculosis. Second mechanism is that the macrophage has, let's make it here, it has the complement binding receptors as well. So let's say this is another pathogen here. On the pathogen surface, C3B complement protein has become attached C3B and so macrophage is now connected with the pathogen through the C3B. Then we also know that the pathogen macrophage can connect to the pathogen through the through the pattern recognition receptors. So these receptors are special proteins that can find various kind of patterns, antigenic patterns on the surface of the pathogen and bind with them. So now various pathogens are, are stuck with the macrophage. What is the next step? This is normal inflammation, so nothing special here, no rocket science is going on. Next step is that the macrophage is going to phagocytose this pathogen. So let's say this is another macrophage or this is the same macrophage. Next stage is that the pathogen has become trapped in this phagosome. This is the phagosome. This is also endosome. So endosome or phagosome, same thing. What is the next step? The next step is that the macrophage will activate its internal machinery, microtubular systems and bring a lysosome and connect it to the phagosome. So let's say over here a bottle of acids is sitting here. What is this bottle? This is the lysosome. What does it have? It has acid hydrolases, it has proteinases, it has DNases and so many other things that can chop up, that can break up a pathogen. Ideally, ideally what happens is if I bring this structure out here, normally what happens is that the phagocyte or endosome is fused with lysosome and then pathogen is sitting on one side and is very happy that hey man look I am sitting in this hot tub I am having fun I my life is happy this is the mycobacterium tuberculosis having fun inside the phagosome however the acid the acid hydrolases and the proteases, those little monsters are now spilling over and they are going to come and they are going to break up the pathogen. However, this, this step does not happen. This phagosome lysosome fusion is called maturity of the phagosome and formation of phagolysosome. That step does not happen in case of mycobacterium tuberculosis. This is the root cause of the problem. 
Now, why does this not happen? It doesn't happen because of a process called manipulation. A step called manipulation by the mycobacterium tuberculosis. What does mycobacterium tuberculosis do? Number one, it causes the pH manipulation in the phagosome. Number two, it inhibits various protein activations which allow the phagosome and lysosome to connect with each other. The end result is maturity. This is called maturity, maturation. Maturation of phagolysosome does not happen. When that maturation will not happen, then what do you think will happen here? Now this pathogen has found a home, it is going to start growing inside the macrophage and it was also growing, if you come here, outside the macrophage in the alveoli it is also replicating. So it is re replicating in the alveolar spaces and it is replicating in the macrophages. So after the replication, what will happen? The macrophage will burst open, the pathogen will come out, it would go into the interstitial fluid, it would go into the bloodstream and bacteremia will occur. Right? So that is the primary way that this pathogen evades the killing. Now, is this a bad thing? All this, is this TB now? So remember that there are two separate situations. Infection with tuberculosis simply means presence of the tuberculosis inside the lung and all this mechanism happening. Disease with tuberculosis is when the damage is occurring and that is the disease. So they are separate. So right now the patient is infected. One possibility now is that the immune system would simply take care of this pathogen and pathogen will be retained, it will be arrested. So at the most what will happen is there will be some scarring in the area where the pathogen was and there might be some involvement of the lymph nodes which we'll talk about it in a second. But the first outcome is that pathogen just got controlled by our immune system and TB did not happen. Second outcome is that the pathogen became dormant. What does that mean? So let's talk about that for a second. So now come back here. Let's say the healing did not happen and the progress of the disease is still continuing. So what is next? What is next is that this macrophage is going to, number one, throw some of the broken pieces of the pathogen out in the tissue. So if I come back here, the, there will be broken pieces of the pathogen released, no, normal function. Second thing, so keep them in mind, number one, there are antigenic parts of the broken pathogen or mycobacterium released in the interstitium. Number two, the macrophage is now going to start going in the lymphatics and through the lymphatic channel, it is going to bring this pathogen to where? To the lymph nodes. Why is it going to bring them to the lymph node? It's going to bring it over there to say, look what I got, I have a pathogen, let's fight this pathogen. So let's say this is the lymph node. Who lives in the lymph node? T cells and B cells. T cells, B cells, dendritic cells. These guys are sitting in the lymph node. Macrophage is bringing the pathogen there. The broken pieces of the pathogen are also coming into the lymph node through the lymphatics. The full and pathogen, the complete pathogen is also washing away into the lymph nodes too. So by two to three weeks, there is enough exposure and enough presence of the macrophage filled with the pathogen, pathogen alone and the antigens of the pathogen that have reached the lymph node. Now what happens in the lymph node? So let's say we make a lymph node over here. So macrophage has come in here, antigens have come in here and some complete pathogens have come in here. When they come in here, what happens is CD4 cells, tuberculosis, tuberculosis, tuberculosis is a disease 
of CD4 cell and macrophages. 